So welcome to this episode of Quilty Bits. Quilty Bits is where I share a little bit of sewing information or quilting information with you. And in today's episode, I am talking about that pesky quarter inch seam. So many of us, when we're sewing, whether we're a traditional quilter or a modern quilter, need to have a good, accurate seam to ensure that our block ends up the right size. And most of us focus on the actual seam. We worry, is it a full quarter inch or a scant quarter inch? And for those of you who sometimes say, well, what is a scant quarter inch? It really just means a quarter inch seam that is a few threads shy of that full quarter inch seam. And what that does is it allows for the thickness of your thread and your fabric so that your unit still ends up the right size. But we'll talk more about that in a second. I think the thing what you really want to think about is it's not so much is my seam exactly a quarter inch on the wrong side of the fabric. The real thing we need to worry about is whether or not our block or our unit that we're making that's going to end up in our block is the right size. And that's what I like to focus on. So what I'm going to be doing is sharing my top three tips for you on getting the perfect seam so that you end up with the right size block. And how important is that, that right size seam? Well, it can be really important. For those of you who've been following along in the Luminous Quilt Along, Luminous being the quilt behind me that was designed by myself and Tammy Silvers of Tamarini's, you'll know that when we started, block one is a nice simple block and there's just a few seams in it. So not so bad, and if you're a teeny bit off, you can probably make it up. And block number two, you need a few more seams, and then as we go along, the blocks get more and more complicated until you get to the block that you can't see, but I'm gonna pan down to in a second, where there are a lot of seams. And if I'm just a few threads off in every single one of those seams, well, my block's gonna end up the wrong size. So let me pan down, show you that block, and then I'll end up at my little table here and we'll talk about some tips to get that good seam. Hang on a sec. Let me move over here. And I'm just gonna pan down. Hey everyone, hi Swan. Oh, I'm just starting to see the comments because of course I wasn't facing the camera. So look at that block down there. Now, of course it's a little bit at an angle, but isn't it gorgeous? But there's a lot of seams there. All right, so we're gonna move on down to my table. And let me just get this nice and set up so that you can um, go ahead and see my table where I'm gonna do a demo. So like I said, I have three tips for you. So let me walk back around so I can do this. And tip number one is to get your machine all set up, right? So whether that means um, putting on maybe your quarter inch feet. Maybe if you're sewing, you like to use these lovely, oh, let me put them on top of a piece of fabric. It'll be easier to see them. Maybe you like to use a quarter inch foot on your machine. These are the quarter inch feet from my Viking machine. And of course, what you can do with this is you, when you're sewing, you just line up the edge of your fabric with the edge of your quarter inch foot. And that works really well for some people. Some people like a quarter inch foot, but they like the one with the little flange on it or gauge or whatever you like to call this. And what happens is that means you can butt your fabric up against this and sort of hold it in place. So that's another thing that people like to use. But we all assume that when we put on our quarter inch foot and we have attached it to our machine, it's the size that we need for our project. And we're going to talk about why that might not always be the case. Now I have a tendency to sew with just a regular foot. I don't usually use a quarter inch foot. And the reason is, is because over here, if, the, if you could imagine this is my sewing machine bed, over here would be my feed dog. And this edge of my fabric is just barely on top of that right feed dog. So what happens is sometimes as I'm sewing, it kind of wants to jump off and then my seam ends up the wrong size. So I find sometimes when I'm using a wider foot like this, it helps hold that fabric on top of that feed dog. So I kind of like to use this, but that means I've got to figure out a way to be able to mark my quarter inch so I can keep my fabric straight and get that good seam, right? Now what some people do, and let's line this up on my little mat here with the quarter inch. Some people like to use post-it notes. They just put the post-it notes on the edge, the bed of their machine, and then as they're sewing, 
their fabric can butt right up against it and you can just line it up and do 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 do, -do so like that. Now post-it notes work, but I find that the sticky on the back goes away really fast. So you're constantly having to adjust it. And for me, it's really easy for me to knock it out of the way and then it's not really helpful. Now, personally, I like to use these guys. It's called the sewing edge. I really like these. They're nice vinyl stops that you can attach. They come with these big long things. I cut them into these little shorter pieces and then see that they've got a sticky back. So what I do is, imagine here we're on my machine. What I do is I grab the perfect piecing seam guide from Celine Perkins, lay it on my machine bed. I don't know if you can see it, but this little hole right here, that is where your needle goes. So you lay this on your machine bed, your needle goes in this hole, and then you know the edge right here is a perfect scant quarter inch. So then I take my little gauge, hang on a sec, it takes a few hands to do this. I can lay this right here. I can just peel back the sticky, put it right here, and now that sits on my machine bed, and it doesn't move around and it lasts a really long time. So that's kind of like how I like to set up my machine because there are a few things that are gonna affect my quarter inch seam. One is making sure I've got some sort of mark that I can use, whether it's my foot or a little gauge like that, to make sure that I'm staying on my quarter inch. The other things that are gonna affect my seam are the fabric that I use and my thread. So now what do I mean by that? Well, fabric, even if you're using cotton from different manufacturers, it all has a different feel. Some feel a little thinner than others. Some have a tighter weave like a batik. Some, like this really nice cotton, has a slightly, slightly looser weave, but it's still pretty thick. And so what'll happen is, maybe I'm using art gallery that has that beautiful hand and drape, but it definitely feels thinner than say a Kona solid. So the thickness of that fabric is going to affect my seam. And the other thing that's gonna affect my seam is my thread. Now I typically sew with an Aurifil 50 weight thread. And if you're using something that's a little bit different, a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner, maybe it's a 50 weight, but it's from a different manufacturer. Well, it's gonna feel a little bit different. It's gonna be a little bit thinner or thicker. And so it's gonna take up a little bit more or a little bit less room in your seam allowance. So one of the things that um, you need to be aware of is when you're setting up is knowing what thread and what fabric you're using. And the other thing that's gonna affect your seam is guess what? Your needle. All of us have heard that you need to change your needle every eight hours of sewing or at the start of a new project. Now, not all of us do that. I know that I don't always do that, but I like to say, this is what you should do. So this is kind of like one of those mom things, do as I say, not as I do. Change your needle more frequently. And that leads me to tip number one. And tip number one is set up your machine, change your needle, and it will lead you into tip number two, which is once you're all set up, test your seam. So how do I test my seam? Well, I'm gonna show you what I like to do. Let me move a few things out of the way. So I love to show you my machine. I mean, my um, how I test. And I'm just looking to see. I think I have a few comments. And hopefully, oh my gosh, hopefully you can all hear me and things are going well. All right, so what do I do to test? Well, you know how when you do a project, so here's a project I'm working on. Aren't these fun? I can't wait to show you this project in, a, in another week or two. Um, so here's a project that I'm working on, and these are all the fabric scraps that I have left. And what I like to do is cut them into a specific size. Now you can cut them into any size you want. You could do two and a half inch squares or three and a half inch squares. What I like to do is I like to cut them into three pieces, and they happen to be an inch and a half by four inches. And there's a reason for that, and I'll tell you at the end. But so they're inch and a half by four inches, and then I sew the three of them together. And then what I do is I press away from the center piece. Now when I press, I do two things. First, I sew my two pieces together, okay? Zip, do 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 And then I press it flat to set the seam. What does that mean? Pressing it flat to set the seam just means you're relaxing those stitches. 
when it comes, the stitches come out of the machine, they can tend to be a little teeny bit puckered. By pressing it flat, it just relaxes those stitches, they sink into your fabric, and then I can go ahead and press to one side. Now what happens is when I press, obviously the fabric in the fold and the thread is taking up some room. So what I'm trying to do by doing this is seeing what do I end up with. So once I've sewn them together, I'm gonna end up with something that looks like this. Now, one of the reasons I love using the one and a half inch pieces is because I can take my little one inch ruler here and I literally can just lay it on my piece just like that. And look, I can already see that my piece underneath is too big. But let me hold it up just a little bit so you can see. Do you see how my piece is, what is it? It's just about a 16th of an inch too big there in the center. You'll notice though what I'm measuring right now, I'm not turning this over and measuring my seam. To be honest, I really don't care how big it is. What I care about is how big my piece is here. So I'm just measuring this piece, but you could also measure your piece from side to side. And you can see while it should be three and a half, it's too big. I don't know if you can see that there. Maybe if I move over a little bit, is that better? So what I wanna do is because the piece here is too big, that means my seam allowance is too small. So maybe I had done a scant quarter inch, but it's just a little too scant. So I've gotta try again. So now what I do is I go and I adjust my mark. And maybe what you need to do with your machine is maybe you need to adjust the needle position. Maybe you can move it over two threads, um, depending on your machine and how your settings are. So now I sew them together again and I test again. And now what happened is I went a little too far and now my seams are a little too big because my piece here in the center is a little too small. So I need to do it again. So I tried one more time. This is like Goldilocks, right? And the, and the three bears, you know, first the chair was too big, then the chair was too little, and now it's perfect. All right, and I can even measure across my piece and see that it is exactly three and a half. Yay! All right, so now I know. And the thing is, you want to do this with the fabric and the thread that you're going to use for your project. And that way you know with those fabrics and that thread, you've got the right seam to end up with a unit or a block the right size. All right, so that was tip number two. That was test your seam. So once you've got your seam tested, have you ever had something happen like this? Now, I don't know if you can tell this because or not. But if you look at this, this is not a perfect rectangle. All right, it's a little wide here at the top. It's absolutely perfect right here in the center. And it's a little skinny here at the bottom. And the reason for that is, is because I love to chain piece. Love to have thrown under my, my units and just keep going and shoving the next one in. And let me show you what sometimes happens when you start chain piecing and you're going a little too fast. So what might happen is, you might have your unit and you go, and I'm gonna put my post-it note back because I think this really helps to see how this works. So there's my post-it note, right? And here's my unit. And I'm so excited to shove this piece and do the next one in my chain piecing that I shove it in and I kind of uh, a little bit over to the side. So what ends up happening is at the top of my seam, it's actually a little bit more than what I need. And then as I'm sewing, I straighten out and I straighten out and I straighten out but that one happens is I'm so excited to grab my next piece, I let go of this one. Remember those pesky little feed dogs that it's barely resting on? Well, it shoves it off to the side like that, and I'm sewing this next one underneath like this. So what happens is I come in a little fat, and I go out a little shallow. It's kind of like tennis. You need to have good follow through. So what you wanna do is you wanna slow down so you can speed up. And what I mean by that is that if you go a little slower when you first lay this in here and keep it straight, and if you're really good and you hang on to it, hang on to this one all the way through your seam until it comes off the needle and the needle is here and in the down position, and then you grab the next piece and start, then what'll happen is these will line up nicely and you won't end up with a piece that's got a bow at this end and a bow at that end. 
So those are my top three tips. I hope that was really helpful. Hang on a second and I'm gonna move the camera back up. All right, here it goes. Let's see if I can do this. Whoa, sorry, I wobbled. Okay, all right, I'm back. So I really hope that my top three tips for getting a good seam allowance that ensures that your block or unit is the right size was helpful. So remember, number one, change your needle, set up your machine. Number two, test. You can use the same size piece as I did, or you could use something like two and a half inch squares. So two squares together, press, remember to press first, and measure all the way across and see if it's the right size, adjust as needed. And number three was slow down to speed up. <laughs>